Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Penny and this is Little by Little. So in today's video we're going to carry on with the roof. So we're going to do our shingling on the top of the roof and then we're also going to fill in those gaps along the sides of the roof as well. Once that's done I've made a couple of little adjustments just little maintenance things that I've been meaning to do for a really long time. I just haven't had a chance to get to it and I'll show you those as well. Okay let's get started. I'm going to start by talking about the material that I'm going to use for the shingles. So I've decided to use this black textured cardstock to make my shingles from. Um, I would love to have been able to find a texture that was kind of pebbly, more like an asphalt roof. Fortunately, I couldn't find that, but I did find this nice textured paper, which I'm not sure if you can see the texture in that or not, but um, there is texture in it. And the first thing that I did was to cut this paper into one inch strips. Now if you have a true 12 by 12 sheet of paper, because not all cardstock is created equal, and sometimes they say 12 by 12 and they're only 11 and 3 quarters by 11 and 3 quarters. So um, if you're lucky enough to get the full 12 by 12, you should get 12 strips out of that. Now a regular three tab asphalt shingle measures approximately one foot by three feet and then each section of that three tab is basically one foot. So technically I could have gone in on this strip and I could have cut it off at every three inch intervals. Uh, but then I decided not to do that because honestly to cut them apart and then to try and glue them butted up next to each other didn't make a ton of sense to me. So I've opted to leave the strips in these full 12 inch strips just to make it easier to work with. I did however go in and make a mark at every inch interval on the strip of paper and I've drawn a line up at least halfway if not a little bit more at each of those measurements. This line that I've drawn is going to represent what would have normally been a very tiny gap in those tabs. Those gaps in a regular shingle are about a quarter of an inch. So to reduce that down to miniature size we're probably talking about less than a millimeter and I just could not fathom cutting hundreds and hundreds of tiny little slits in this paper. So I've just used a black pen instead. So that's what we'll be using. So let's bring our roof back onto the work table and we'll get started putting these shingles on the roof. And what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that my rows of shingles go on straight. So I'm gonna start measuring all the way up the side of each of the shingles and then draw some straight lines all the way across so that I'm not having to measure as I go. I'll just be able to use those lines as a guide for where to lay the top of those rows of shingles. So my first row is going to be just shy of an inch off of the bottom edge. And I say just shy of because an actual shingle will hang over the edge of the roof by just a very small amount. So in this case, I'm probably only going to put about maybe uh, 15 sixteenths of an inch instead of a full inch. So we'll start by marking that measurement first. After that one is measured, I'm gonna measure every half an inch from that line all the way up to the crease. And I'm using a half an inch because those shingles when they're laid on are only going to be about a half an inch of each shingle showing. So I want to make sure that I'm putting them into the right spot. So measuring a half an inch all the way up to the top. I'll make the same markings on the other side. So you can see that I've drawn all of my lines across now. 
And so we're going to start applying the shingles. Now you have a couple of different options here. You can use glue to attach the shingles, or you can use a two-sided tape if you like. Um, your chances of warping are pretty minimal because the chipboard is glued down to this two-sided foam board, so it should be sturdy enough that you don't have to worry about warping. Um, but really it depends on your glue. The higher the water content in your glue, the higher the likelihood that you'll have warping when you use the glue. So I have this really nice thick two-sided tape. And so I'm going to use that and see how that works. Um, so basically I'm just going to put a strip along the bottom edge. So you want to make sure that when you're applying your shingles that the side of the shingle that you've drawn the line on is at the bottom. Again, I'm using that line that I drew, that pencil line, as a guideline. And I am going to hang it over just a tiny bit off of the this side as well as the bottom side. So that's your first row or your bottom row. Now each time you add a row, you want to make sure that the lines that you've drawn are offsetting for each other. You don't want them to be in the same spot, you want them to be alternate. So when you put your second row on, you're probably going to have to hang over a little bit more on the side in order to get that effect. So if I want it to sit about here, and then again using the line that I've drawn as a guide for where to start. And then lay in my second row. And we're just going to carry on all the way up to the crease where the door opens and then we're just going to go up to the top. So here we have the first and the largest section completed. Obviously I have to go in and trim the edges off but I did want to show you that it does still open and I brought that top one all the way up to exactly where that crease is so that I have the ability to open that without any kind of restriction. I'm going to carry on now and go up to the top. Um, you don't need to go right to the top because there is going to be a piece that goes over the top that will kind of finish that part off. So we'll work our way up this side and then we'll start on the other side. We'll eventually go in and tack this down, but I'm going to wait and do that when the other side is finished as well.
So now that I have all of the shingles on, I just need to finish off this top section. So I've just cut a couple of pieces that are the same height. They're still one inch wide, but they don't have the cuts or the slats in them. So I've gone ahead and scored them down the middle and I'm just gonna fold them down. And then this is just going to go on the top. So now all we have left really is to just trim off these excess edges and our shingling is done. My next step is to finish putting the roof together. Now you'll remember that I cut out those uh, triangles out of the styrofoam and that I also cut out some chipboard to cover it up. So that's what these are now. We have our uh, piece of styrofoam on the back and I've just attached the chipboard to the front and I've done my siding. Now I didn't record the siding simply because I've already done a tutorial on the siding already. And so I will put a link to that video though in the description box so that you can go back and have a look at it and see what that process looks like. So I've covered all of my chipboard pieces with the siding and I've already painted it to match the house. So now we just need to put them into those spaces. So we'll have a look at that now. So our centerpiece is just going to sit in there because remember we're not gluing in that centerpiece so that we always have access to the electrical that's on top. And so this one will just sit in that space like that. My other two pieces that are going to be on the side, I am going to attach, but I'm going to attach it to the roof that lifts up. So I'm actually going to glue it to this section up here. That way it'll move up and down with the roof when I need it to. So we have our um, porch piece, which will sit in like this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply some glue just on this doubled up foam board here. So you can see that I've now put in all of those pieces. Um, as I said, I've glued to these side pieces onto the roof itself. So those lift up when I lift that roof piece. I wanted to show you just a couple other things that I've done. These were like rainy day tasks that I've been meaning to get to. Um, throughout the process of this house and just never got to so I wanted to share those with you So one of the things that I did after the roof was done was I extended these pieces of trim all the way up to the roof line um, Prior to that it was of course level with where the removable walls were and Once I had the roof on there. It just really looked unfinished. So for all of the corners of the house I've extended that trim all the way up to the top and I think it just gives it a more fluid, cohesive look. One of the other things that I've done is I went into the inside of the house and I added some trim up around the ceiling area. Because what I found was when I turned on the lights to have a final look at it, I could see light coming out of all kinds of cracks. Uh, cracks in the house, cracks in where there's gaps in between the wall and the roof and there was light just coming from all kinds of places where it shouldn't have. So that's why I ended up putting the trim in. So hopefully you could see it. So you can see here where I've put that trim up around the ceiling. Some of it is attached to the wall and some of it is attached to the ceiling depending on whether or not it was a removable wall or a permanent wall. 
Um, I've also added this piece of trim up here. Now, if you look at this piece of trim from the other side, it looks exactly like the rest of the wood trim around the inside of the room. But I've painted it on this side, the same color as the house, uh, because when it was just the bare wood, you could see in the crack that there was a difference in the color. So I went ahead and painted that so that you couldn't see that color difference as well. On the front side of the house, I had to finish off this little access down to the root cellar. This piece was opened and I needed to close that off and paint it so that it matched the rest of the siding. So now that those are done, really the only thing left on this project is just to do a little bit of landscaping around the house. And so I have a static grass applicator and I'm going to be using that in the next video and I'll show you how that all works. And that will be the very last video in this series. So stay tuned for that and we will see you in the next video. Bye for now.